Hello and welcome to Schmieden. Uh, my name's Andrew. Um, I have been the project manager of our EVO 2 restoration build here. Um, as you saw in the previous video, uh, the reveal, uh, Christos seeing the car for the first time after many years. Uh, thanks very much to all of our supporters and subscribers for the great comments and uh, your support during the build. Um, it's great to see how many people are following and I appreciate what we've been doing with this car. Um, yeah, a very special car. We're very proud to have been a part of its history. Um, and today, basically, I just want to take you around the car and show you some of the interesting parts that Christos and we have uh, added. Um, if we start in the cabin, uh, it's a good place to start, I guess. Basically, it's a right-hand drive, which is unusual for this specific model. Uh, normally, they're left-hand drive only. Uh, BMW made them originally as a race car and uh, really only intended to have it as um, a left-hand drive car this one's been specially converted for Christos upon purchase from new so this is a one owner car and uh, Christos needed uh, a right-hand drive uh, he lives in England so it makes more sense for the safety aspects of it as well um, to have it converted which he had done in Huddersfield uh, in 88 when the car was purchased from new um, and yeah it's been um, in his possession for that period of time um what we have here <clears throat> is pretty much original as you can see around you the cabin is as it was uh, there's no changes there um roof lining everything as is was intact luckily we didn't have to source or supply anything there but what we did make changes to basically was uh the gear shift setup which is supplied by auto solutions from the us it's an amazing uh I guess you can't really see but what I can tell you is is that it's precise which is the whole point um, the setup is basically the shifter assembly is screwed to the gear box there's nothing connecting it to the car it's uh, completely free floating in that essence sometimes if you see videos where cars are in a in 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 a, in a long uh, long swing and and the gearbox will drift and the shifter will move that kind of causes an issue hand to uh, from wheel to gear up and uh, this kind of eliminates it because there isn't that there isn't that twist now where the box moves and 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 the body stays in the same position so you don't get that if it does move then it moves just on a perpendicular it doesn't it won't swing away from him or towards him so he'll always have that contact he knows where it is all the time and like I say it's an amazing feel to it so I can only imagine how much of a joy it's going to be to drive when it is driven in anger that will be fun um, steering the steering itself originally on that side steering wheel for the M3 I think is about a three and a half I think it's a three and a half um, because it was converted to right-hand drive obviously there wasn't an M3 rack for the right-hand side so they had to go for that up for a regular um, uh, standard I would guess a 325 unit, whatever it was. I don't think the rack is any different in Asia, um, which is a 4.2 or 4.1. So four and a half all the way from one side to the other is long. Um, this is a Z3 1.8 or 1.9 rack. Um, and the ratio on this one is only, well, it's 2.7, uh, 2.7 lock to, to lock. So that <clears throat> gives obviously a, a, a great deal more responsiveness in the swing um, and also, um, just, just generally a, a much more um, alive feel behind the wheel. Uh, um, some people up for the uh, purple rack, the uh, E46 unit, both of which we supply, um, not plugging, just saying. Um, we, we supply both of them, um, used and, and, and new. Um, so you can contact us for that if you wish. Uh, um, Christos opted for a classic, let's call it retro, uh, head unit. This was one that he had initially um, in the car, I think, before the burglary. And uh, he managed to source the uh, same unit again and adjoin that with the 6CD changer in the boot that I'm going to show you in a bit. Um, so he's, you know, over the moon about having this piece. For him, uh, it's more sentimental value than anything else. I mean, you know, cassette. But it's not about what it can, it's about what it is and not everyone gets it and that we understand but at the end of the day it is a joy to see um and the fact that it maintains the originality of that you know period 
which is important for us all as well. Um, we changed out, well, he chose, but we changed out the uh, six button board computer for the 13, the 13, which incorporates an immobilizer system as well. So in fact, he's got a built-in immobilizer in the car now. And you know, it's an old car, but it just shows that BMW were thinking ahead even back then. Um, but yeah, like I say, there's the thing about the M3 is, is that it is, it's a simple car. Inside, outside, under the bonnet, it is a simple car. But it does the job so well. Even now, it's 33 years old, you wouldn't want anything. You don't need anything else. It is a perfect car. And anyone that's ever driven one or had an E30 even, will tell you the same. It is such a lovely place to be. And it's really going to break my heart when it's not here anymore. Such is life. But um, yeah, we will... Uh, We'll get past that. Right, let's have a look under the bonnet. Instantly, you're greeted by the uh, iconic BMW flash there. Um, there's, you know, story about what the colours stand for, but you know, that's. Uh, I'll leave that for the BMW history buffs. There's no, no need to get into that. What I do want to tell you about, though, is what is in under the hood. This is a double overhead cam, so 2.3. It's uh, increased compression version because it's the Evo 2, so it's 11 instead of 10 um, to 1. Um, only the Evo came with uh, the color coded uh, valve cover. Uh, obviously, people can buy them as, uh, as add ons or extras, but it was, it was originally only on this model. Um, there is also an upgraded ECU which gives this version 220 horsepower. Um, the standard, I think, USA was 195 or 196, and the Euro version is 200 on the standard. 220, if you think about it, the engine is 2.3, so 220 into 2.3, that makes it almost 100 horsepower per litre. Compare that with supercars. So it gives you an idea of what BMW were working on, and this is production, this is street, this is a regular everyday version. This isn't, you know, pumped or, or, or pimped, this is as they were. So, you know, 33 years ago, to get almost 100 horsepower per litre, BMW M knew what they were doing. Okay, so yeah, here we've got the uh, Mishimoto uh, aluminium, it's a full aluminium rad, um, with an increased core size, uh, so that helps with uh, the E30 uh, cooling issue. Um, the S14s are known to run a little bit warm, especially on idle, um, and yeah, so we've done what we can in this instance with this, uh, with this uh, radiator here to try and improve uh, the cooling potential. Obviously we don't have the viscous uh, clutch and fan assembly which um, isn't actually a OE part for this particular model. It was supplied without that but um, I mean we would recommend it in any case but it does take horsepower away from the engine because it functions as a bit of an air brake. So in this instance Christos has decided that he doesn't want to do that, he wants to omit that and he's going to go for an electric fan setup. We do have the auxiliary fan in there, so that is helping in any case. It's not just running on, on, on just purely the radiator alone. Um, these hoses, especially custom made by Samco, um, they do a basic set for the S14, but what they don't do is the breather hoses and, and the fueling hoses. And what we did was is we actually managed to get hold of the OE set, send them to Samco. They designed mandrels specifically for these hoses. So this is a one-off set they don't make them these were made specifically just for this car that goes to show how unique this car is the uh piston resistance i would say is this this is a uh, it's, an, it's an oe plenum design but the, the the design itself is is made of carbon fiber um the unit itself is is basically just uh i think it not even a quarter of the weight of the original one. This is about, I don't know, a kilo and a half. Yeah? Um, the original one, I think, is about seven ish, seven or, seven or eight kilos. I'm, I'm not even sure exactly. But the reason that we went for this one was is, is twofold, basically. The weight puts a. Uh, uh, it puts a. It puts a. It, puts a, it d distributes the weight unevenly. It kind of leans the airbox away from the engine and creates a gap here was uh, gaskets and if they leak then obviously the car will run poorly uh, or unevenly it's just unmeasured air coming into the engine which is never good um, and the sound 
the sound is amazing. I mean, if anyone's ever heard uh, uh, um, a carbon air box itself, it could be on any car, but I mean, the, the sound is, is, is heavenly. We haven't had a chance to take it, you know, to its true potential yet, but what we have heard of it has been fantastic. So we're looking forward to uh, Christos giving us some reports back in the future um, of how much of a pleasure it is to hear it from inside the car. Um, obviously, yeah, we had, um, we had all of the decals in the engine bay um, replaced. So all of these are from a English supplier Again, uh, a good friend of ours within the community and does this specific type of work for almost pretty much any uh, classic or vintage BMW. And the problem with these are is that they can't be got anymore. They can't be sourced anymore. Um, a lot of them have gone out of production from, from many, many years ago. So it was amazing that we have the opportunity to still be able to recreate you know, a, perfect, a perfect engine bay with the details needed to make it look authentic. Uh, so we thank as well uh, Constantine for, for the help there and uh, Pukar Designs for, for supplying the product. Um, what else is there really to mention? I mean, Christos was, uh, Christos was pretty much set from the word go that he wanted to use the car. And when I say use the car, he wanted to take it out and use it at track days. I know that that might sound ridiculous because, you know, oh, you can't take this car out and race it. That's what it was built for. Um, it would be a shame to take it and lock it away. But at the same time, you know, with respect, you know. So, yeah, he's planned some, uh, some, some track days. I know that he's got a, a calendar fully booked for next year. Um, and so the setup, tyres and suspension was pretty much a requirement. Yeah, but that's, that's, um, that's what we did. Um, like I say, it's been a pleasure and we will miss it. I mean, we've, we've seen enough for the best part of almost two years um, and yeah it's been it's been a challenge but it has also been a pleasure and I don't think there's many that can say that they've had the opportunity to work on such a car um, and at the same time produce such a result I mean it's not everything that's available anymore and for those that have this car know that it's not easy and I think you can only really perform such a task if you have a really good network. I mean, all of our suppliers have been amazing. Our painter was great. Um, our body man was great. Um, the mechanics have been excellent. Um, and, you know, obviously Christos, without his help, I'm, I don't think it would ever be finished. Um, there were some parts that we couldn't, we couldn't have done without his help. So I can only thank all of those involved. And like I say, it's been a pleasure. Um, yeah. I would say I look forward to doing the next one, but I think there will only ever be one Evo 2 that. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, hope it's been as much fun for you as it was for us. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Again, thanks a lot for all of, uh, all of your kind comments and look forward to uh, seeing you again.